Hello everyone, I'm Fede from Play, and in this video we're going to learn four things. How to use components from a Play project in Xcode. How to change the data, for example, images and text. How to dynamically change their state. And finally, how to access the component variables that we've set up in Play and change their value. Let's start. If we look at the Play to Xcode wizard, we're going to see the list of components that your project has. If you select one of them, you're going to see the implementation details. This is the code that you need to write in order to show this specific card in Xcode. If we go to Xcode, you're going to see that in the package, we're going to find the components folder, and you can see the whole list of components that you can add to your Xcode project. I have a simple view here. It only has one button. And what I want is to actually show that medium car that I showed you and that I made in play. In this case, is car medium, and then you went with parentheses. Just by doing that, you now see that this car is in my Xcode preview. One of the coolest things about Play to Xcode is that all the interactions that you add to your components are also carrying over into Xcode. So, for example, if I click on the see all button in the car, you see that the chains of the state and the animations are being brought over from play. And then I can just kind of like scroll through the photos and the pagination dots are also working. So now that we have the car with all its interactions inside this specific stack, now we can change and update its data. For example, when it's carrying over from play, you see that the default title of this car is exploring the countryside, and then it has this mountains photo but we can change that dynamically. Let's start with text. I can just press enter, then type thought, and then we're going to use the set text helper. So I'm going to write set text. And now you see that the first part is getting highlighted. I can access the layers or the text layers in this case inside that specific card that we created in play. So for example, if I type thought, you're going to see that this card has a caption, an eyebrow, and a title. There are text objects and that I can modify. I'm going to set title, but let's see it in play. For example, I'm going to go back to play and then you're going to see that this car, as we see in Xcode, actually has the same layers that Xcode is exposing to us. We have the title, we have the eyebrow, and we also have the caption. What we're going to modify in this case is the title. So, Let's go back to Xcode. And now the second part is what value we're going to give it to this specific title. I'm going to press tab. So it directly goes to the second part. And then I just need to open quotes. And now I'm just going to press Command B to paste the text that I have in the clipboard. Great. So the next step is to change the image. We're going to use another helper. In this case, we're going to press Enter type dot, and now we're going to use the set image helper. And when you press enter, it's going to behave the same way as the other one. It's going to ask us about the image that we need to change. So in this case, press dot, and it's going to expose all the images inside that car component. In this case, we're going to select image one. And now for the value, let's take a look at the wizard in play. In the wizard, we were in the components tab, but if you change to the assets tab, you're going to see all the images, videos, and fonts that are also getting exported into the play package. And they all have different names that we can use in Xcode. So going back to Xcode, you're going to see that in the package, if we go to media, all those images and videos are there. So for this second part in the value, we need to write images, which is the list of images that we exported in the play project. We're going to type dot. And now you see that as I type dot, all the images that I exported are already there. So for example, if I select balloons, I should be able to see the image, but it's giving me an error. And this is because the image needs to be of type UI image, but this is easy. We just need to type a dot again, and now you see that Xcode will autocomplete with your image. And just by doing that, now we change it the text and we change it the image from our car from images that we exported to the play package. 
Earlier, we talked about how the interactions in play are carrying over into Xcode, and I can click on this C all to expand the car, and I can click on the close button to move back to the default state. But what I want to do next is to actually change the state of the car by clicking on this button that I created in Xcode, and it's not part of the play project. So how can we do that? The first thing we need to do is to create a variable that is going to tell us what the current state of the car is at any given moment. About the body, we need to write at state, which is a property wrapper in Swift that allows you to dynamically change the state of our car and update the UI accordingly to reflect the state change. We're going to write private after that because we want the scope of the variable to be within this view. Next, we need to write bar for variable. Then we need to assign it a name, current state in our case. And now we need to initialize its value. By writing the name of your component dot state with the S being uppercase. And at the end, we need to add a question mark. A question mark in Swift means this is an optional. The value can be empty or be any of the states of the car that we created in play. In this case, be default or expat. The next thing that we need to do is to actually assign the value of this variable to the state property of the car. I'm going to go just below the set image helper, pressing enter and then writing dot. And in this case, I'm going to search for state. And now inside this, I'm going to type a dollar sign. And then you see that Xcode auto completes with the current state. This is the way you can call a variable inside the state property of the car. Now, this is pretty cool because right now the state is the default state. But if instead of like typing default state, I do expand, you're going to see that now the Xcode preview updates with the car being by default in the expanded state. This is pretty cool, but let's go back to the default. So now that we have our variable and we also assign the variable value to the state property, now we can change the value dynamically with the button. So inside this section over here with the curly brackets, this is called a closure. We can add the code that is going to toggle the different states of the car. We want this transition between states to have an animation and not happening like right away. So we need to use the with animation inside Swift. I'm going to type with animation and then I'm going to complete with the brackets. You see the curly brackets over here, another closer. And inside this section is where I'm going to type the code to change between those states. I'm going to use a if else condition to do this. There is other methods, for example, here in the comment, there is a more death friendly way, but it's a little bit less readable. And so for this video, I just choose to do it this way also because it's the same way we do it in play. So let's start by writing if, and now we are going to write current state. So if the current state of the car equals the default state, then what we need to do is to go to the expand state. So we're going to assign a new value to that variable. We're going to write current state equals expand. But if it's not any of these cases, then we need to do the reverse. So in this case, current state will equal to the default state. Now, again, the current state could be empty or could be another state. So you need to check for all the states that you have within your car. But just to make things simpler in this video, I just left it to be this basic if else. So now if I click on the button, our car animates and changes its state. I can go back to default and I can click again and it's going to expand and I can close it. So, so far we have learned how to add components into a view inside Xcode to modify its data, changing text and images, and also to dynamically change their state using other elements inside our screen. The last thing that we're going to see in this video is to modify their variables. So if we go to play, 
we're going to see that this car component has two component variables is favorite which is a boolean that can be true or false and also an accent color when is favorite is either false or true we are going to actually update this button to say saved or not saved so let's actually do this in exco we're going to go back to exco and now if you select the car medium at the top inside the parenthesis we're going to be able to change the value of a variable so for example i'm going to type is favorite and now you see that xcode is telling me this is a boolean so it can be false or true if i type false you're going to see that now the car updates with this save button and if i change it to be true instead it's going to update and say this specific car or article has been saved. So this is basically how you can change the variable values of the component, the state, and also the data after exporting them from play. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.